my name's Jane and welcome to my channel. You may have noticed I've had a little bit of a change of name. I'll explain about all that. I have been working on my latest forthcoming sewing pattern, the Martha top, made another t-shirt dress and other bits and bobs. So grab a coffee and I'll be right back. Welcome back and as I said in the intro, welcome to the dressmaker's closet. Loopy Mabel's closet is no more. So it just I just thought I thought about it for quite some time that it didn't quite didn't quite represent me and what I was doing. Loopy Mabel was born from my crochet side. I have Loopy Mabel Crochet channel, which is completely obviously separate crochet dressmaking. So when I thought I would bring out another channel for my dressmaking, I just automatically just went Loopy Mabel's closet, like the closet for the dressmaking. And that's how it stayed. But I just felt as if it didn't really explain or didn't really do it do my channel any justice because it didn't really if you just saw Loopy Mabel's closet, it, you wouldn't automatically know what it was about. And what was me bringing out more, going down my dressmaking, publishing more dressmaking patterns, uh, I just thought I need to get it right, I need to get my branding right before I continue any further. And if I'm going to do it, I need to do it now before I bring out any more patterns. So I thought, right, yesterday was as good a day as any, so I got a notepad and pen and just literally wrote loads of words down relating to things that I do. Uh, I wanted to keep Mabel in the title but it didn't quite work with what I wanted so Mabel the mannequin she'll always be always be in the background Mabel so it's not like I'm getting rid of her and I wanted a closet because I just love that word closet just old-fashioned vintage word for wardrobe isn't it I just love that and I just thought what what is it about my channel what is it that I do and I thought well it's dressmaking sewing dressmaking and I just thought how about the dressmaker's closet so I'm keeping the word closet and it really does explain in a little heading what my channel is about the dressmaker's closet so I just thought, right, that's it, I'm going to change it. So my website, loopymabel.com, will be changing to thedressmakerscloset.co.uk. I'll put all the links in the box below. All the links for loopymabel.com will redirect you to the new, the new website. But the website isn't changing, just the name. Everything's still going to be the same. You'll still be able to get my crochet patterns and obviously all my dressmaking and haberdashery and what have you and my blog. And I just thought, you know, closet still still includes things that you wear and you wear my crochet design. So I'm not like getting rid of that or losing that. And I just thought the dressmaker's closet just encapsulates everything and includes everything that I do. So that's, so I'm really pleased and I really do love the new name. So obviously I've tweaked my logo slightly, um, added a little bit of a colour background to it and just tweaked it a little bit. And I'm really happy with that. It's it's simple, it's classic, it's got a vintage vibe and it's got the pink in it, which I love. And it's just, I think it literally represents me. So I'm smiling because I'm really, really pleased. I'm so glad I did it. And um, so I'm moving forward now. Hi, I'm Jane and welcome to the Dressmaker's Closet. I think it sounds quite good, don't you? So I've changed over my Instagram. So if you follow me over on Instagram, I'm now the Dressmaker's Closet. Whatever I post on Instagram automatically gets posted on Facebook, so you'll find me there. Yeah, really love it. I'm really pleased. So that's what I've been doing there, and my website is just getting like redirected some some throughout today. It takes 24 hours for it to redirect, so that's going through now. So probably when you see this video, it will be the dressmakerscloset.co.uk. So yeah, so on to what I've been sewing. So if you remember my video when I did the um, one meter double gauze, one meter challenge for Felicity Fabrics, I'm a blogger for Felicity Fabrics, I'll pop the card up there to the video. And I'll show you the top, just to remind you, in this gorgeous foiled double gauze in the denim blue. So I literally squeezed this out of one meter of fabric, but literally when I say squeezed I squeezed the seam allowances are tiny 
the binding on the neck is hanging on for dear life because I literally had to stitch it to the very edge of the fabric. The sleeves, I wanted it to be slightly longer but I couldn't get them any longer because that's all I could squeeze out and the frill, the frill I literally had to stitch the frill on just in one go on the overlocker. I didn't, I didn't have enough fabric to stitch it then overlock it because I was lit literally is tiny. So that's what I did and everybody absolutely loved it and said would I bring it out as a pattern and I thought you know what yes this would this would be make a great second pattern. So this is called the Martha Top and thank you to Lindsay because I asked you a few videos back if you'd have a nice old fashioned name for me and Lindsay said how about the Martha Top and I thought yeah perfect so the Martha Top it will be. So I've been working on this one this is the second one and obviously I had more fabric to play with. This is an art gallery cotton poplin, part of my Minerva blog and you'll see full details of on my profile on Minerva if you want to see some more pictures of me wearing this. But obviously I had more fabric to play with and you can quite easily get this top out of probably one and a quarter meters but more comfortably one and a half meters. This is how this one would have been made if I had a little bit more fabric so the sleeves are slightly longer, much better hem. The bias is, you know, proper bias, proper, uh, this is self-binding, um, but the lot's plenty to play with and it's stitched on beautifully. I wasn't literally squeezing it on under the foot and, you know, the frills attached properly and yeah, absolutely love it. And also I wanted to make this in different composition, fabric compositions as part of my fabric research. Works every time. And... Um, so yeah, so it works and it's obviously it's a crisper, more crisper fabric, a cotton poplin, but it works really well, really pretty and nice drape, not as drapey as the double gauze. I wanted to test the drape, the drapeometer, shall we say, but yeah, really nice. So that's version two and this is, and this is perfect how I will bring it out as a pattern. But I was talking to Lynn, my lovely friend Lynn, who I meet every fortnight, my lovely new best friend, sister that I never had said how about doing one with a facing on because not everybody's confident to do a bound neckline I thought yeah you're right Lynn especially if you're just new to sewing or you you know you're a bit rusty and you're coming back into sewing and these are sometimes not the easy things to put on so I have drafted the facing so I'm going to do a few more samples with the bound neckline in some fabrics I'll show you in a second and then a couple more samples or maybe one one more sample with the faced neckline so the faced neckline will have the button loop which will look kind of like my all atop so this has got the facing and then it's just got the button loop and obviously it's just understitched so this version would have the facing, understitched facing, just to see how that would work. And if it works fine, then I would do that as um, an option in the sewing pattern. I want to bring out my pattern so the user friendly and all different skill levels can have a go. So if I offer a bound neckline or a faced neckline, then they've got a couple of options there. And I think because it's a fairly loose style, I'm going to bring them out in sizes as an extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, two extra large, rather than individual sizes because because it's a lovely roomy top. So there's version two. This is version two, but final, the final draft in the design. There's, I don't need to tweak it anymore. It's perfect. The gather on the neckline just works out lovely. Not too much. Really delicate. It just gives you that gorgeous gorgeous gather at the front and then the high low hem just something a little bit different really pretty really pretty so that's all perfect now in, in like in my eyes and obviously I'll do the first version and then I'll do another with the bound neck version so that's them and also, I think it would work quite well, this top, in maybe a jersey as well. So I'm going to do one in a jersey just to see what it would be like because there's no reason why you can't use a jersey on a woven pattern. It's the other way around where it starts to get a little bit technical. You can't really use a uh, woven on a jersey because obviously jersey patterns are made slightly smaller because of the stretch of the garment. But I think it would work quite well, jersey on this, so I might make a jersey one. But then I've got these chambres that have been sitting on my shelf 
these French chambres. So I've got quite a bit of this. And then I've got this gorgeous blue, larger print. And then I've got the blue version of this one, blue version. And then I've got the polka dot in the pink. And also the blue version of this. So I've quite, got quite a bit of this to play with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be making the Martha top to sell it in the shop too. I'll be making, um, be making a selection of different sizes to purchase in the shop too using these gorgeous chambres. So that's going to keep me busy. Also help me um, see what it's like to use the chambre but I think it'll be absolutely fine. I think any light to medium weight fabrics will be absolutely fine for this pattern. So that's the Martha top. So that's what's happening with that. So the pattern is coming down, oops, so the pattern is coming down the line. It's almost ready to go over to my pattern testers and then I'm going to be also making some actual garments to sell in the shop. And then I'd like to be working on the Orla top too. So that's something that's going to come out probably after the Martha top. But then there's also my t-shirt dress that people are saying, can I bring this out as a pattern? So there's not enough hours in the day, ladies. There's not enough hours in the day. And I'm absolutely loving your encouragement, your support, your feedback. It just, it just yeah, makes my day. Thank you so much. Yeah, so this is version three. So if you remember version one, I made this version out of this gorgeous French terry. And I just added a contrasting neckband and a cuff and it's absolutely beautiful i really love it and it's got the frill the lovely frill at the bottom and now because it's in a french terry i thought oh it's going to be a little bit too thick for the summer but it's not it's absolutely fine it is quite heavy it's quite heavy but it's really nice and light to wear if you know what i mean so it's not like i'm wearing anything thick in the summer and i've worn it in the sunshine it's absolutely fine but when i did version one i wanted a little bit more puff puffiness to the sleeve so you know me, always trying to improve. So I thought, right, I'll make it again and I'll use this gorgeous organic jersey that I've had on my shelf. Right way around would be good. Been on my shelf for over a year and I knew there was a reason why I didn't sew it. I knew I was keeping it for a reason and I'm so glad I made it. It's just stunning. I absolutely love it. It's got that retro vibe, the floral, my colours. It's just gorgeous and it's organic. It's so soft and beautiful. So yeah, so I'm glad I made it. And this is version two, and I just used a contrasting like antique white trim, and I'd made a deeper cuff, a little bit deeper cuff, if you can see, a little bit deeper, which is perfect what I wanted. A little bit more poof to the sleeve, which is how I, the image I had in my head originally for that one, but I obviously I didn't put enough fullness in the sleeve. So I adjusted the sleeve and it's now perfect. So that's version two and I feel absolutely lovely and feminine and swishy and pretty when I wear them because I'm not a great dress lover as you know if you follow me uh, but I've, I am really loving wearing dresses and I'm wearing one today. This is version three. There's no difference to this one to version two but this is a fairly lighter, well it's a lighter weight cotton jersey to this one only slightly and I just thought well I'll see what it's like in a lighter weight and it's absolutely fine same i haven't done anything different to the sleeves i've just got that little bit extra puffiness which is what i was after and the deeper cuff and i made this one slightly a smidgen shorter just to see what it would be like more midi length because these are i would say maxi length i made these this is midi not quite maxi slightly shorter and i've just got them with my white, with my white pumps obviously there's been pictures up of me wearing them all and people have said to me over on instagram oh can you bring this out as a pattern so I would like to bring this one out as a pattern too, but I need a name. So I'd like you to help me again. Obviously, Lindsay helped me in naming Martha for this one. So if you can think of a nice old fashioned name that would suit this t-shirt dress. So it's, you know, fairly long dress, puffy sleeves, short bodice, gathered skirt, it's got pockets. So a nice old fashioned summery, maybe old fashioned summery vintage name. If you can think of one, please let me know in the box below. Hopefully one of those names will spring out and I'll know it's a perfect one for this. So if you can help me, that would be great. So that is that. So I've got working on the Martha. I'd love to work on the Orla. 
if you remember the Arla one with the raglan sleeves and I did that lovely embroidery and uh, I always think of our toffee now when I wear this because I did the slow, slow embroidery should we say not long after he went to heaven and I was thinking of him when I was sewing it so now when I wear this I always think of our toffee and it makes me smile so that's good isn't it so yeah so name for this dress please if you can think so what else have I done so that's my name change my Martha top my t-shirt dress and then also you might notice I've had a little bit of a different backdrop today I my room started to get a little bit not cluttered but yeah a little bit cluttered well no, not cluttered but whenever I do a video I have to move a lot of things around for me to get enough space for the camera and the light for me to sit and I just thought you know I emptied the summer house out a few weeks ago purposely to do something with it half of the summer house is empty the other half has got tools and things in but the other half is empty because it's a really big summer house I got it specially made for me it's massive it's something like 12 foot by 10 foot proper solid well-built summer house and I just thought that could be um, make an amazing little backdrop YouTube studio backdrop for taking more professional photographs and sewing patterns so I've done a little bit of a footage for you so I'll show you the footage just to show you exactly what I've got going on over there thought it'd be perfect to paint up the back all white and I just thought it'd be absolutely perfect for a different kind of setting I mean I've only got the one door open and I've got quite good light so with both doors open it'd be really good light and with it being painted white it will be even better I think yes yeah, so I'm gonna make a start on that in the next week or so and obviously I'll film and keep you updated as I'm doing it just another job another job to add on my list of things to do isn't it good to have a move around and you know me i like a move around so i mean loads of room That is my summer house, so what do you think? So it's, I've got quite a bit of room to work in, so I thought if I get a nice white, nice bright white, paint my half of the summer house, paint it nice and white, have maybe a few little props in the background, and then there's loads of room for me just to go in there with the camera and do some filming, and also if I have a nice white background backdrop to take more professional photographs for my images for my sewing patterns. And obviously the light in there is amazing without any light on and that only had the one door open and it's got two doors for the summer house so I could open both doors and I think the light would be even better. So especially through the, the spring and the summer I thought that would be absolutely ideal. I sit in there, do some filming, nice uncluttered backgrounds. I know we like to see a little bit of clutter, I do. Uh, but you know for when I'm trying to do like professional things, so that's the plan for that. So need to go and get some white paint and obviously I shall film it and take you along with me so you can see the before and after so that's something else I'm going to be doing and as I say my backdrop obviously is different so I've been playing with my cotton threads and isn't that just a lovely little picture of cotton threads it's not just me who just loves looking at cotton threads surely because I just think that's a picture of heaven and I had a lovely day it was raining one day last week and I just thought you know I'm going to sort out my threads and I ordered two more thread hangers from Amazon they came the next day popped them up sorted out my threads put them all in color coordination as you do and then i've been using these little bobbin holders put your bobbin on there and then you then pop that in your cotton and then it keeps them all together genius so i did all that so i've got a couple like so you've got the longer version they both do exactly the same so you've got the longer version so you just pop your bobbin through and it sits at the top and then you pop like so and then you've got the shorter version more a bit more flexible more rubbery but this does exactly the same job and with that one you just pop your bobbin on the top 
and then you just thread your bobbin holder genius so i've been playing with them never seen them and you're always losing your bobbin threads but if you like to keep everything organized and just sew like i do these are perfect and you just always know that you've got a bobbin wound to match your thread perfect genius idea so i've been playing with that and i just love that little backdrop i think that's it for today's video so i hope you like my name change please let me know in the comments box below please let me know if you've got any ideas what i can call the t-shirt dress a nice old-fashioned vintage name please if you don't mind and uh, if you just found me please don't forget to subscribe hit the bell and like my video because apparently by liking my video it helps my channel grow even better so please if you don't mind and come over and say hi and follow me over on instagram at the dressmakers closet but yeah so thanks for joining me as always i'll keep you posted on all the things i'm doing and i shall see you on my next video but until then please take care and as always happy sewing Thank you.